All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to try to show you how to add materialized CSS chips to our web app. So chips, basically, if you go to materializedcss.com, see under forms, we have chips. And basically what it is, it will let you have a field like this where our user can add multiple inputs like something like that. So let's go to our web app. So we're going to add this to our form in our existing web app. I'm going to use this spot for it on the right. So one thing I've changed in here, I went to my HTML and I changed the target to top after I deployed it because I want to be able to develop this and then I did the same for page HTML. So both target base is top now instead of the last one that we changed to. So first I need to add the chip to our project that is going to be in our form. So that's our page HTML. If I scroll down, see that's that last row. This is the spot I want. So I did this autocomplete box here. If I go back, see there's that autocomplete. Now this is the column for the next input and that's where I'm going to add the chip. So I'm going to go back here, scroll down. I'm just going to use this empty chip, the one we had on top that looks good to me. That's going to be the first one. So just copy that, go back to our application and paste it right in there. Save it. All right, let's see how this works. So if I go here, I'm going to click, see nothing happens. So that doesn't work. So we probably need to initialize the chip. So if I scroll down, let's see how we do it. There it is. See on DOM content load, we need to do this initialization of the chip. So that's good. Let's go back and do that. So I'm going to add an ID for this thing. So I'm going to say ID chip, save it. Now I need to get to JavaScript of this page. So I'm going to go to our page JS and this is our DOM content load. So we need to initialize our chips. I'm going to go back here, find well, I already had that. I'm going to copy that for now. Go back here and paste it right here. So the chip, we're going to not use this query selector. We're just going to do get element by ID. The ID we call chip. That's the element. Instead of calling this elements, I'm going to call it chip EL for ch chip element. Not ship, chip, there it is. I'm going to copy that and that's where I'm going to provide here. I don't want to use any options. I'm going to just leave that like this. We're going to initialize those. And when we initialize that, we're going to save it in a variable. So we're going to call this variable chip. Let's try this one more time to see what happens. So I'm going to save that, go back here reload. So something must have happened because now these are not aligned the same. So let's click here. Let's type something. So I'm going to do orange, apple, uh, banana. Good. I'm going to do other, more, more. Oh, apparently chips cannot accept same thing twice. Interesting. So it's a unique list. Good. Anyways, so this works. Now the next part is going to be to be able to grab all of these and put it in our spreadsheet. So in our spreadsheet, we have so far these columns. The last one is date. So I'm going to add one more here. We'll call it chips, I guess, because I don't have a better name. And we'll try to just get that information and put it in a comma separated list in our new column. Let's find a function that 
runs when we actually add something to this list and click run. So I'm gonna scroll down. There it is, button click action. So we have this entire whole validation situation going on here. And when it's all valid, what we do, we do this add record function. So let's go check it out. So this add record function is this one. Okay, so now what we need to do, we need to add another information. So this user info, we need to add another one. That's gonna be basically the data from the chip. And what we need to do, we need to get the data from that chip. So let's see how we're gonna do that. So let's see if the documentation gives us anything about this. Chips data object. Chip content image options set the chip data. So this is setting. We don't want to set it. Probably let's keep going. Array of current chip data. So that should do it. Chips data. Let's try it. So if I go back here and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to access this thing right here, this chip that we initialized. And I'm going to say chip dot chips data, which based on what the documentation is saying is array of that. Okay. So if we get that array and that's accurate, let's keep it like this. Then we're going to basically just send that to our user clicked function, which is our user info. And we should have that chip in our code side. So if I go to our functions, let's find user clicked. There it is. Let's just try to log the user info. All right, I've saved this. Let's go back and reload this. Let's see what happens so far. And click run. So let's go check our log and see what it says. So our log says the Google Sheets, zip, first name, last name, chip is null. So that's not good. Let's go see what's happening. So I'm going to go back to my JavaScript. Take a look. So we have this add record. Uh, ah, so we may have a situation where we're not able to access that chip variable. So let's declare that chip outside of this and make it globally accessible and then set that in here. Let's see if that helps. So I'm going to save this, go back, reload this and try this one more time. All right, let's go check. Cool. I think that works. See, we have the chip, an array of objects. So I don't really want that tag. I just want an array. So for that, I'll go back here and take care of that. So let's see. I'm going to go back and find, this is where we got the chip. Chips data gives us this. That's not what I'm looking for yet. So I'll just create a variable here. Hey, we will do it like that. It doesn't matter. We will basically just map it to a new array and that will accept a callback function. And that callback function for each chip, I'll just use C for chip. We're going to return. So that's going to be an object. So going to be C dot tag. I think that's what it was. So hopefully that will 
just make it a nice object of the list we provide. So I'm going to save this. Let's go test this out. Reload it. Good. I'm going to click run it. I'm going to go back, view the log. Cool. So we got an array of orange banana and berries. That's good news. And that was in our functions. We have this user info now dot chip, which is that array. Uh, we don't want the array. We just want the list. So we'll just join, join method to create a nice text. I don't want to log it anymore. I'm just going to put it after the date, just like that. Save it. So that should now let us add it to our spreadsheet. So we're going to delete all this stuff here. So let's see if we can add a new item here in the list with chips in here. Go back here, just reload. Okay, click run. Let's see what happened on our app site. Cool. So we're able to grab the chip information and put it here. That's good. Now the last thing I probably want to do after this information is sent, I want to clear all the stuff that's entered here in this chip thing. Delete chip. Delete the index of a chip. Okay, so that just deletes one. Is there a way just to clear all of them? So maybe now we can use the data that says it should accept a chip data object, which is this, I assume. So that was probably that same thing we were just working with. Let's try that out. I'm going to go back here and find our JavaScript. So after we enter that information, that's going to be that chip and we'll take that chip and do the data equal to, and that should be an array it should really have nothing in it, but I'm not sure if we still have to do like an empty object there or not. Let's try to set it to an empty array. Let's see what happens. Save that. Let's try that again. I'm going to go back, reload this. Run it. All right, so that didn't work. Unless we have to then update the field. So let's see if there's an update on this. Select chip. Initialize. I'll just keep it simple. Let's go here, copy this, scroll down until I find this. So we're gonna set the chip data to an empty array and then we'll take that chip element and then we'll initialize it all over again to that chip variable. Let's just test this, go back here. Cool. Run it. Nice. So that cleaned it up. Let's go check it out. And we got the results from our chips. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.